Hello everyone, I am Zach Peterson here live from the show floor at PCB West and I am here with Tyler Richards, How's it going? president of UFAB. So if you could just real quick, give our viewers a quick overview of UFAB, what you guys do. Yeah, so we, uh, we make machines to do ultra rapid circuit board manufacturing and we're also working to make dom domestic circuit board PCB production uh, affordable and cheap. Uh, and we do that through a proprietary laser manufacturing process that doesn't require chemical etchants. Uh, okay. Yeah. And uh, busy, busy. Yeah, yeah. That's and that's really cool. You know, it's a it's a whole new take on the process that is really I don't even know how old it is at this point. What is it? Seventy years old or something? I, uh, invented during World War II. Yeah, so, during World War yeah. II. Yeah, it's so almost a hundred year old process. I think it's it's time for some innovation in the space. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So you've been doing some cool stuff also with another company, I think with some, some unique materials going through your processing steps. Tell us about that. Yeah, so we've been working with uh, Quantic. They make a copper clad laminate that has an embedded resistive element in it. So what's really cool about them is you can essentially build resistors inside the layers of your circuit boards. Uh, and, and clear up you know, your top and bottom layers for uh, you know, active components, makes it easier to route things. It's a really cool technology. Um, and thus far, uh, one of the things that's been uh, difficult with that material is it's maybe plus minus 10 to 20% uh, tolerance. And uh, that, that kind of makes it difficult for you know, a, a lot of applications. Uh, but what's great with our technology is uh, we can actually trim that, uh, that material without changing the, uh, the shape of the resistive element. Uh, down to sub 1% tolerances. Um, wow. So yeah, we're talking, you know, embedded analog electronics uh, and, and things of that nature uh, with really high tolerances. And, uh, and you know, for high frequency applications, things like that, uh, miniaturization is another really cool thing uh, that it allows. Yeah, the high frequency is interesting too because, you know, a lot of times when you have to access some of those components that, you know, would normally go on a surface layer, it totally prohibits any routing in the internal layers because you have yeah. to go through a via. Exactly. And then you have to do the via design, design at your target frequency. And this totally eliminates that. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, you're, you're uh, no more via stubs and things like that. And, right. you know, all the, all the weird RF things that, that go into that. It's, uh, it's, it's exciting. So this Tyser material, this, this is really interesting because my understanding is it's basically something you just put right into the stack up. Exactly, yeah. Okay. And, and it's all geometry based as well. So uh, the, the value of your resistors is, is not determined by uh, kind of external factors. It's only determined by the, the shape of the resistor itself. Uh, and of course, with our technology, the trimming as well. Sure. Um, and, and so you can get a lot of essentially custom uh, uh, resist, uh, resistor values uh, that you wouldn't necessarily be able to get off the shelf. Okay. Uh, which is cool. Nice, nice. So then you just build the next layer on top of it, put it through the rest of your process, and it's essentially what someone would do in the standard etching process, but they're using your laser-based processes. Yes, yeah. So uh, it, it's, it's, it's cross-compatible. So our laser-based process is uh, compatible with the uh, chemical etch process and, and vice versa. And uh, so it, it's, it's really just uh, plug and play, essentially. Sure, sure. So then what about like more advanced processes like sequential lamination or sublaminations? Can you do that inside of a UFAB machine? So we, uh, we have a, 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 laminator, uh, a laminator that we offer. So uh, we're, we're qualifying things like that. Uh, you know, it's <laughs> every day we get new requests for new PCB right. processing uh, things. So uh, it's definitely something that we don't think engineering wise there's any prohibition against. It's just something we haven't proved out yet. Okay, okay. So so I'm hearing it's on the roadmap. Yeah, on the roadmap. For All right, sure. cool. Yeah. <laughs> so you've also brought some samples. Yes. And, uh, you know, for the folks watching, we're at PCB <laughs> West. There's a ton of vendors here. They've all got their samples. And I think that's one of the reasons you come here is to get to see all the samples. But you've actually got some samples yeah. right here that were done on a UFAB machine. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this initial sample, this is our uh, our prototype carrier. So this is what gets fed into our prototyping machine. Um, you, you know, small form factor, et cetera, et cetera, 62 mil. Uh, and these are uh, two mil trace space uh, uh, BGA parts that we've kind of arrayed on here. There's really, really small BGA pads there. Yeah, yeah. So this is FR4, but you know, obviously, well, we're not just uh, we're not just printing on FR4 here. 
Uh, we've also printed on, this is a, uh, these are actually Panasonic flex materials. That is immersion 10 coated. Okay. And then this is uh, Enig. Uh, uh -huh. And again, this one, I believe this flex board goes down to about two mil, uh, okay. give or take. Uh, and you're doing two mil line in space yeah. on your machines. Yes, yes. And okay. and actually our, our laser spot size is so small that we could get smaller than that. Okay. Uh, but I, I, I start to get nervous when people talk about, uh, you know, 50, uh, or sorry, like 30 mil trace spacing and things like that. Okay. Those are kind of... Uh, Give me 30 micron. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry 30, 30 micron. micron. Yeah. I was gonna oh say, my goodness, say. yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, 30, uh, we, 20 micron spot size, so, uh, you know, I think 50 micron uh, is two mil. So, I mean, yeah. we can easily get that, but uh, theoretically we can get down to 20, uh, 20 micron. Okay. So, yeah. That's that's push, <laughs> pushing it in terms of what folks can do uh, with HDI and UHDI. Yes. Um, because I think some of the most advanced capabilities today are advertising 15 micron. Yeah. And they're <laughs> trying to push to 10 micron trace in space. And you're already pushing at 20. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I uh, and, and honestly, that's just an optical limitation. If we were to fit some different optics on our machines, we could actually get that small spot size much smaller. Okay. Um, but again, I don't know, uh, <laughs> roadmap uh, yeah. related thing. <laughs> for sure, for sure. So then um, once somebody takes one of these panels, right, mm -hmm. how do they depanelize it? Do you guys have uh, just standard milling and routing? No, so the, the, the laser can do that as well. Okay. So the laser handles, uh, you know, etching, obviously it handles drilling, it handles routing. It actually, we've, we've done, done V-scoring as well as pseudo V-scoring, I suppose, since sure. we're not actually running it through a V-scoring machine, but we can the control- The laser is making the V-score. Exactly, yeah, we can control the depth of cut very precisely. Um, and uh, yeah, we've also had it, you know, obviously it's doing solder masking, it's doing the silk screening as well. So it's the whole entire line uh, in a single machine. And then what about plating? What about like, you know, you have immersion tin here, you have Enig here. Was that done inside a UFAB machine? No, so the uh, the immersion tin uh, we did uh, in a, just a, a traditional vat. Um, okay. The Enig, uh, actually on this FR4 sample, the, it's actually pre-coated with Enig. Uh, oh, okay. And, okay. Uh, but uh, we've done just pure copper boards as well, like pure copper surface finish. Uh, it's it's uh, it's really whatever you choose. Uh, and the via plating, we also have a pr uh, proprietary process for essentially taking the boards directly out of the machine and then putting it into a plating bath uh, without any kind of electroless uh, copper deposition or anything like that. So I, I guess one thing to add to the roadmap here, my suggestion, is is a machine that can do plating. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I uh, well, so we make the machine that does the plating, but obviously, okay. uh, you know, we don't want to put that inside uh, the, the 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 laser system, right? So sure. you take the board out of the machine and put it into your plating bath. I see. Uh, I see. And and then you're you're good to go. Uh, okay. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So if anyone is interested in learning more about your machines and, and how to, to bring one into their facility, where, what do they need to do? Uh, so, you know, I uh, go to our website, u-fab.co, uh, not c-o-m, c-o, uh, and uh, contact info's there. Uh, you know, you reach me directly at tyler at u-fab.co. Uh, and uh, yeah, always, uh, always happy to talk. Awesome, awesome. Well, Tyler, thank you so much for hey. coming on and talking to us. Thank you. I was glad to run into you here on the show floor. And of course, if you're watching out there, make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. We'll have more episodes for you soon. Thanks, everybody.